Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the sequence function in Excel. This is one of the newer functions that's only available in Office 365 and not in earlier versions. So let's take a look at this function in Excel. So the sequence function returns a sequence of numbers. And the syntax is equal sequence, rows, columns, start, and step. So rows is the only required argument that says how many rows of values do you want. The optional arguments is columns. Do you also want a number of columns of numbers? What number do you want to start with? If you don't indicate that, the default is 1. And how do you want it, the numbers to increment? Again, if it's not indicated, it will also step in increments of 1. So let's just say I want 10 numbers. So I'm just going to type equals sequence and type 10, close my parentheses, hit enter, and I get a list of 10 numbers. Very basic. I didn't indicate how many columns or what number I want to start with, etc. It just gave me a list of 10 numbers. Let's say I want a block of numbers. I want four rows, three columns. I want to start at the number 10 and I want to increment it by 5. So I'll type equals sequence. I want four rows three columns. I want to start at the number 10 and increment it by 5, close my parentheses, and you can see I get 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way up to 65. Now notice it goes in column order, so 10, 15, 20 across from column A, B, C. If you want it instead to go down in rows, then what we can do is take that same formula and transpose it. So I'll type equals transpose and then type my sequence function again four rows three columns start at 10 increment by 5 close the sequence function close transpose hit enter and now it's basically transpose that block of numbers so it goes down in rows instead of going across in columns now, that's just using sequence to generate a list or a block of numbers, but you can use it in conjunction with other functions to create interesting formulas. So let's say I want a list of the first day of each quarter for the next 24 quarters. I'm going to type equals date, and I'll use 2021 as the year. For my month, I'm going to use the sequence function. I want 24 rows. I want just one column. I'm going to start with the number 1, or at the first, and I want to step by 3 because I want every 3 months or the first of every quarter. I'm going to close that, and then part of my date function, I want to have it to be the first of every quarter close my parentheses, hit enter, and notice I get a list of January 1st, April 1st, July 1st, October 1st. Then notice it goes to the next year, etc. So Excel is smart enough to know to go to the next year for the quarters. Here I have a list of sales values, and I want to know what the top three and the bottom three of that list are. And I also want them in descending order. So I'm actually going to sort them. And my array is going to be large. Here's my values here, comma. My K number, I'm going to type sequence. And I want the top three. So I want a list of three there. I'm going to close that large function off, comma. I don't need to indicate the sort index, but the sort order, I want them in descending order, so I'll put minus 1, close my parentheses there, hit enter, and now I get the top three values in descending order. So now I want the bottom three on the list, so again I'll type equals sort, and I'm going to say small. My array for that is this list. 
comma, and the k number for my small function. Again, I'm going to use the sequence function, and I want 3 there. Again, close that parentheses, close that for the small function, comma, Again, I don't want sort index. My sort order, I'm going to use 1 instead because I want them in ascending order. Close that, hit enter, and now I have a list of the bottom three in ascending order. So that's the basic sequence function in Excel. Again, it can generate a list of numbers, but you can also incorporate it into other formulas, and it can become very useful. And that's how you can do that in Excel. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please share it, like it, or give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my blog at my website, excel-bytes.com, or any of the social networks you see below. Have a great day, and happy Excelling.